The NBA has a deep and rich history filled with many great players and with many all-time great performances. With that being said, some of the most impressive performances to ever take place have become lost through the passing of time. For example, many incredible performances weren't even caught on film prior to the NBA merger in 1976. For goodness sake, the highest scoring performance in NBA history was done by Wilt Chamberlain in Hershey, Pennsylvania in 1962. On that night, Wilt scored a jaw-dropping 100 points on 36 of 63 shooting. Unfortunately, the only people who were ever able to witness that performance with their own eyes was the few thousand people in attendance that day. This game was never caught on film. The closest thing we have is a radio broadcast. Now beyond that, some NBA games are even more mysterious than Wilt's 100-point performance. Prior to the 1974 NBA season, block shots and steals were not officially tracked by statisticians. If you look at NBA.com, Basketball Reference, StatMuse, or whatever page about basketball stats, you'll find nothing related to blocks and steals before the 1974 season. Due to this, we're left to speculate what was possible during that era. There are rumors of legends from the 60s achieving things on the defensive end that would seem utterly impossible by modern day standards. But unfortunately, there's no way to prove with indisputable evidence that these facts were actually accomplished. Or is there? Maybe, just maybe, there was one man. One trusted source. A source more reliable than any other stat keeper of basketball history and maybe very few people know about him and his work. As many of you have probably guessed, I know of this man. His name is Harvey Pollock. Harvey was no regular statistician, but rather he was the Michael Jordan of statisticians. Harvey worked in the NBA for a whopping 69 years that spanned from the very birth of the league until his death in 2015. During his remarkable career, Harvey had many different jobs and responsibilities. He was the PR director for the Warriors, he was a writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Associated Press, and the United Press International, and he did all of this while being an official NBA statistician. As a statistician, Harvey was way ahead of his time, as he was tracking shot distance, triple doubles, and plus minus ratings way before anyone else was paying attention to those details. Harvey was an eyewitness to some of the greatest games in basketball history and witnessed more games firsthand than any person watching this video. Among the games that Harvey witnessed was Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point performance. Not only was he the one who accumulated the stats for that legendary game, but Harvey was also the man behind the camera in what's arguably the most iconic image of basketball history. And it was Harvey's idea for Wilt to simply hold a piece of paper with a number 100 on it. To put it simply, Harvey was a professional and a highly respected individual within the association. This man has more credibility and has a greater impact on the game than just about anyone. And because of this, he was elected to the Hall of Fame. Now this is all cool stuff about Harvey, but at this point, you're probably wondering what I'm getting at in this video. Well, as I mentioned earlier, blocks and steals were not officially tracked until the 73 to 74 NBA season. But if that decision had been up to Harvey, the league would have been officially tracking those stats much earlier. Harvey understood the immense value of the defensive side of basketball, and because of this, he started his own personal stat keeping of blocks and steals as early as 1959. Obviously, being a statistician for the Philadelphia Warriors and 76ers, he was able to witness the career of Wilt Chamberlain and track his games completely statistically. Not all, but some of his box scores were saved and are actually available to be viewed online if you know where to look. In total, we have 112 games available from Wilt Chamberlain's career that were tracked by Harvey Pollock. Today, I'm going through some of the most incredible performances in these 112 games. Let's get into it.
On January 5, 1960, against the Lakers, Wilt recorded his first of many triple-doubles involving blocked shots, as he scored 52 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 blocks on 53% shooting. A little over a month later, against Bill Russell and the Celtics, Wilt had 53 points, 29 rebounds, and 11 blocks on 57% shooting. A couple weeks later, he met with the Celtics again, and a rookie Wilt Chamberlain dropped 39 points, 25 rebounds, and 14 blocks on 44%. On November 24, 1960, Wilt had his famous record-setting rebounding game. In that contest, he scored 34 points, had 55 rebounds, 4 assists, and 8 blocks on 36% shooting. On March 14, 1962, he had a monstrous triple-double, with 34 points, 33 rebounds, 4 assists, and a whopping 20 blocks on 44%. Obviously, his 20 block shots would be an NBA record if those stats were official. A little over a week later, against the Syracuse Nationals in the playoffs, Wilt scored 56 points, 35 rebounds, and 12 blocks on 46% shooting. His 12 blocks would be an NBA playoff record. Next season against Russell and the Celtics, he scored 43 points, 32 rebounds, and 12 blocks on 44%. On April 11th, 1965, Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell had one of the greatest battles in NBA playoff history. In Game 5 of the series, Wilt scored 30 points, 21 rebounds, and 2 blocks on 56%. On the other hand, Bill Russell accumulated 12 points, 28 rebounds, 7 assists, 12 steals, and 3 blocks on 57% shooting. Russell's 12 steals would be a record in a regular season game, let alone an NBA playoff game, which is a record that seems impossible for a center to achieve but I guess that just adds to his legendary defensive reputation. Let's carry on. On October 23, 1965, against the Pistons, Wilt dropped 53 points, 21 rebounds, and 15 blocks on 84%. A couple months later, against the San Francisco Warriors, he dropped 33 points, 30 rebounds, 8 assists, and 16 blocks on 59%. On November 8, 1966, against the Pistons, he put up 18 points, 24 rebounds, 4 assists, and 17 blocks on 62%. On March 31, 1967, it was Game 1 of the East Finals against Russell and the Celtics, and Chamberlain exploded for 24 points, 32 rebounds, 13 assists, and 12 blocks on 69% shooting. If these blocks were officially tracked, Wilt would be the only player to get a quadruple-double in NBA playoff history. What's crazy is that he would go on to get another one that same postseason. On April 16, 1967, in Game 2 of the NBA Finals, Wilt got 10 points, 38 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 blocks on 40% shooting. He was 2 of 17 from the free throw line though, so hey, at least he sucks at something. On Christmas Day, 1968, against the Phoenix Suns, Wilt scored 15 points, 15 rebounds, 6 assists, and 23 blocks on 75% shooting. His 23 blocks would have broke his own NBA record of 20 blocks. So now, let's look at the 112 games as a whole. In all of Harvey's games where he recorded Wilt's stats, he averaged 8.8 .8 blocks per game. That's nearly three times the average of the blocks leader in this past 2023 season. Out of these 112 games, 40 of them were triple-double performances that included block shots. That quadruples the NBA record, which was held by Dikembe Mutombo and Akeem Olajuwon. Speaking of quadruples, Wilt got three quadruple-doubles according to Harvey's records. At this point, some of you may be wondering where Wilt's legendary quintuple-double game is. Apparently, this game was also tracked by Harvey, but it isn't archived with these other 112 games. So in a sense, it's an even more unofficial game of these already unofficial games. Although I do think that one actually happened as well. It's easily the most impressive game of Wilt's career, if it is in fact accurate. Regardless, I think this video establishes that Wilt was a freak of nature, and it's gonna take more than removing a few games off his resume to convince me otherwise. To take your own look at Harvey's stats for Wilt Chamberlain's games, I posted a link in the video's description. So what do you guys think? 
What do Harvey's numbers say about Wilt and the era he played in? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.